back to another video from the cold and blustery Wyoming today. Um, <clears throat> I've been promising since I put the last video up that I talk about how I stay warm up here. Um, it, I missed the worst of winter, obviously, by coming up in March, but we've still had some winter weather. Um, and like even uh, like today, it's uh, I got up this morning to 39 degrees and 75% humidity and a 20 mile an hour wind. So not really uh, true winter, but yeah, le less than ideal, less than pleasant for, for me, for sure. Um, that's weather that doesn't do anything positive for uh, arthritis and uh, compared to after having spent a winter in Arizona where it's much nicer than that. Um, heck, it's, I think it's in the 80s or top of 90 down there right now, so um, no comparison. Um, but, you know, I mean, spring in Wyoming can be worse than winter in Arizona. So I'm glad I missed the worst of the winter here. Um, I, I love being a snowbird. It's great. Uh, but even, even uh, like last fall, I mean, we were staying in uh, Flagstaff in September, and all of a sudden it started cooling down. And before we knew it, we were getting nighttime temps down into the low 20s, and, uh, you know, frost on the car and the grass every morning, and it was cold. Um, and so it took some, some creativity to stay warm, because I hadn't really planned on it getting that cold that fast, so I didn't have the right gear. So I'll talk to you a little bit right now about what I do to stay comfortably warm in the van. There are people who go to greater lengths than I do to stay warm or who use uh, more detailed systems. I like to keep it simple. I don't get into anything complicated. Um, I like to just stick with what works easily. Um, you know, so for example, some people will talk about heat and water bottles and stick them in a sleeping bag and things like this. And you know, to me, that's just too much aggravation. <laughs> On top of that, I'm worried about the thing leaking and making it, because then you'd have a real problem if you get your bedding wet with a leaky water bottle. So it's just not something I mess with. Uh, <clears throat> I keep it simple. I am not using supplemental heat in here right now, um, you know, like a propane catalytic heater. Uh, the bottom line is that with a minivan, it's just crowded enough that there's it, it's difficult to uh, position it anywhere where it's going to be safe, where it'll be far enough, far enough away from flammable materials like uh, side curtains or uh, bedding and, and you know even the carpet on the floor um, <clears throat> so I just don't use it. Um, it there are occasionally are times when it would be nice to turn it on for a few minutes but it brings a risk of fire that I'm not willing to take uh, you're in a small vehicle and if you set it on fire you have uh, literally seconds to get out before uh, you know to escape injury and because of the setup I've got right now the safest place uh, space wise to put the heater would be right in front of the uh, side rear door which means I would have to go if it started to fire there I have to go through the fire to get out the door because my back door doesn't open from inside and my other side door is blocked by the bed so yeah I, I just don't bother with the supplemental heat right now now if I was in true winter conditions I, I probably would have to figure out how to safely install the heater somewhere but I'm not in those conditions so I can get by what I do um, you know during the day it's fine even on a cooler day because as long as the sun's out at least you get enough solar effect from the sun to warm up the van where the door is shut you know I got lots of glass so um, as far as in the evening, like if I'm driving somewhere, because I have to do a lot of stealth parking these days. So if I'll uh, drive somewhere, I'll run the heat, of course, while I'm driving and get the interior of the vehicle warmed up as much as I can. And then it, you know, keep the doors and windows shut and it'll and bundle up and it'll stay warm enough until I go to bed. Um, Sometimes I'll grab a blanket and throw it over myself, uh, you know, well, if I'm sitting up reading or something, to. Um, and the other thing I'll do is I'll get up in the bed and, and uh, you know, prop my back up and, and put my legs into the sleeping bag so I can stay warm, warmer that way. Um, my hands and feet tend to get cold more than anything. So, as far as staying warm, uh, layer, I'm not going to tell you anything here that's, like, earth-shattering or, um, you know brilliant this is just basic uh 
stuff that you'd use if you were hiking or if you lived, uh, you know, up any time up until we had central heating in our homes. <laughs> Everybody did this stuff, right? I mean, this, so this isn't uh, th this isn't anything uh, earth shattering. It's j it's just uh, you know basic outdoor uh, skills. Uh, but I'll go over what I do and, and how I stay warm at night. And, and you know, like just a few nights ago, for example, we were down to 19 degrees here. And not only did I survive, um, I actually slept warm. I was not cold at all. So I'll show you my setup. Um, and it starts with dressing in layers with, with appropriate layer clothing. Um, it can... You know, and, and like in a warm day here, like we had a couple days ago, uh, over the weekend, it was in the 70s a couple days in a row. So, I mean, and it goes from that then down to the 40s for a high, and, you know, and it's 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 really uh, crazy weather around here. It changes a lot. But it starts with dressing in layers that are appropriate to whatever the temperature is. Um, in the coldest of weathers, weather, I'll wear, you know, maybe long underwear on, on bottom and, and a pair of pants maybe a couple pair of socks if necessary um on top i have a long long underwear uh, polypropylene that works really good um and then i might wear another shirt over that and then i might wear like this is my heavy cold weather shirt and then i'm gonna put my windbreaker on, on top of that and that's all i've got for clothing so <laughs> if that isn't good enough i'm just out of luck you know but uh that's how I do that for clothing, and that makes a big difference. If you wear a hat or something, that'll help you stay warm when it's cold. Uh, it makes a that makes a big difference. Um, I used to have a, a hooded sweatshirt that I used the hat for, but that uh, got pretty ratty and got replaced with this. So um, this doesn't have a hood on it. So so what I do now is I just wrap something around my head, you know, like a scarf or some type of thing or something. Okay, so it starts with dressing. In layers and that, that'll help you stay warm while you're in and out of the vehicle and what have you um, and the layers will serve you better than one heavy coat because you can adjust up and down as you need to so then as far as bedding um, I have a fairly again fairly simple setup so on my bed here I just have a sleeping bag this is a Coleman brand uh, 20 degree kind of a hybrid bag it's not a mummy bag but it's not quite rectangular either um, so it has a uh, hood that you can wrap around your head. So it's sort of like, you know, it's kind of a hybrid thing. Now I have another blanket. And this uh, is actually a family um, heirloom type thing. But I used to have this on top. So two things about having it uh, on top like I used to do was, uh, first of all, the material slippery. So it would slide off on me all the time, which was annoying. Losing your blanket, the extra blanket in the middle of the night. Uh, second thing was that... Uh, and a viewer actually suggested that uh, their experience was it was warmer putting those knit blankets inside the sleeping bag. And so I tried that, and of course it holds it in place a lot better, and it is warmer. So on my recent 19 degree night, for example, I was in this bag, which is rated at 20 degrees. I uh, had a, that knit blanket inside there, had on, you know, three layers on top, and... Uh, and then I used a piece of uh, fleece I have that I sometimes use for a curtain too. And I just wrapped it around my head like a scarf and to keep my head warm, for, you know, limit the heat loss out of my head. And I slept completely comfortable, you know, all night long, um, right through right through 19 degrees. So that was, you know, a good test for uh, this setup. I've been winter camping and and car camping in the winter you know for many many years now so it's not a basically my whole life so it's not anything new for me but this was a good the first time i tested this setup in some real cold so that was that was encouraging to know that it worked well and then a note on uh sleeping bags if you're if you're new to the sleeping bag world uh they they, they always have temperature ratings on them and the general thing to keep in mind with the temperature rating is it means you probably won't freeze to death at that temperature <laughs> if you uh, you know the, the 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 truth is that it's unlikely you're going to sleep comfortable at that temperature so you got a 20 degree bag you get in there with uh you know 
just your pajamas or one layer of clothes on, you're going to be awfully cold at 20 degrees. You're going to be shivering all night, most likely. Um, <clears throat> but a 20 degree bag with a supplemental liner and uh, blanket like I have and, and a couple layers of clothing, keeping your head covered and you 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 know you can be just comfortable at you know 20 degrees. <clears throat> so moving beyond that, when I get stuck in situations where my, why my gear isn't up to um, staying warm enough for the temperature, I have a few other things I do. I have a Soul Escape Light bivy sack. <clears throat> That's sort of like an emergency uh, bivy. I actually carry it all the time in my day pack whenever I go hiking or anything. And it's designed to uh, raise your comfortable temperature about 15 degrees. So, you know, help you stay alive overnight if you're uh, <clears throat> unexpectedly out. It also serves as a great supplement, though, if you get stuck with some real cold weather. Um, now, you can, you can put that on on the outside of your... Uh, sleeping bag uh, or whatever you got, blanket, whatever you got, and it will. It does make, in my experience, a ten or fifteen degree difference, you know. And and you, I, I say that based on multiple nights sleeping with the same setup in similar temperatures, and <clears throat> you know it, it makes for me a ten or fifteen degree difference. So, uh, I got that off of Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description for you. Um, I think it was around thirty dollars. Um, the catch with this is this is not one you'd want to use like every night because it's fairly lightweight and it doesn't like zipper down the side or anything. So it's a little bit awkward to <clears throat> crawl into it and crawl out of it again if you have to, uh, you know, relieve yourself in the middle of the night or something. But it does work and it's a nice, it's, it's small and light, so it's a nice backup for those times when you just need a little extra something. Um, other options you can play with if you just need to get a little more uh, warmth and it's cold out you can grab a, uh, a like a space blanket an emergency space blanket and stuff that into your sleeping bag above your body uh, you can also use and I've done this <laughs> use a sheet of Reflectix a lot of us have Reflectix in the vans for window coverings or um, other things uh, you know if you got a piece of Reflectix shove that in um, I don't know that I'd recommend whole body, but even half body or three quarter or something. Um, put it above you, shove it down to the bottom of your sleeping bag. It will make a big difference. What it does, they reflect. It's just designed to do is reflect heat back. So what it does is, even though it has a low R value, when you stuff in your sleeping bag, it actually helps keep the heat inside the bag and helps prevent it from leaking out. Uh, and passing out through the sleeping bag material. So I've done that. I uh, actually did it last fall on Flagstaff. Uh, it was kind of a, a whim. I was, as I mentioned earlier, I guess I was I was caught with a surprisingly cold temperatures dropping down into the low 20s. And unexpectedly, I had a, at the time, a cheap 40 degree rated sleeping bag, which really did not keep you warm to 40 degrees for sure. Um, so I was wearing every layer of clothing I owned, cause, which isn't much. And I was still freezing at night, uh, especially like my feet and legs and stuff. I just could not stay warm. So I, uh, I had up on this idea, and I, I said, geez, I wonder if I could stuff some Reflectix in there. That piece. So I did. I stuffed a, a relatively small piece down in there, enough to cover my feet and uh, lower legs, and it made a significant difference you could uh, definitely feel the difference like if you put your legs under there for a bit and then stick your leg up on top of it you could definitely tell the difference so if you catch with that it doesn't breathe so you could potentially end up with condensation or, or moisture problems in the bag so I would recommend if you do that you take it out open your bag up and dry it out during the day and I you know, I'd also don't know if I'd recommend a full body sheet of that because of the again the, the uh, condensation problems potentially but uh, it, in a pinch it's a great way to <laughs> boost it up a little bit without having to use supplemental heat which some of us don't have and some of us just aren't in a position where it's real safe to use the supplemental heat uh, so, or, or if you run out of propane, you know, I mean, that happens to <laughs> you run out of propane in the middle of the night or something and, and you're still in a pickle. So these are just the, um, 
if you got a basic system, you know, layers of clothing, a decent sleeping bag, uh, you know, maybe an extra blanket or something you can stuff in there. And then if you if you want to go go all out, you know, you can think about things like a, a bivy bag or uh, you know some other liner that you can use to supplement for those times when it ends up a little colder than you expect. Now we snowbirds. Um, for me and for anybody else that, that travels with the seasons more or less we can avoid the worst of the weather and that's really great but sometimes you still get caught by surprise it's just an unexpectedly cold spell comes through and you got to be able to adapt to that so if you're if your sleeping bag for example is normally great for the typical lows of where you're at you know, then it's something like an extra blanket or an extra, uh, you know, bivy bag can make the difference for those times when you get caught by surprise and it's colder than you expected. So I hope this helps. Um, I, I, I've been doing this for many, many years, including winter camping in cars and in tents. So I, these are things I've been testing for a long time. Um, people who are in super cold climates, um, you know, I spent a year up in... Uh, Eastern Montana, for example, and it was we we routinely had daytime highs of minus forty, uh, without counting the wind. So if you're places like that, or Minnesota, Wisconsin, Alaska, <laughs> yeah, there are places that get really cold, and you're gonna have to take additional steps beyond what I've outlined here. But for what I'm talking about here is is not I'm not trying to tell you I'm not trying to tell you everything there is to know about cold weather stuff. Just what I do and what works for me. This is my system, and it works very well uh, with relatively moderate climates, all the way down to below 20 degrees when necessary. But normally, you know, I'm dealing with lows of ideally 40s or 50s. <laughs> Those are real easy. Uh, sometimes 30s, you know. But, you know, up here in Wyoming in the spring, you know, it does get down at the 20s. We have had multiple nights in the 20s here, actually. And then one below 20. So this is what I do. Uh, hopefully that at least gives you some ideas of uh, real-world practical examples. There are things you can do to supplement, like, uh, uh, you know, catalytic heaters. I would not run one at night when I was sleeping, but, you know, if you got them and you got room for them, you can run it before you go to bed and when you first get up in the morning. Um, people use water bottles and sometimes electric blankets and all kinds of other things. Those are all more complicated than I care to get into. I just like to keep it simple, and I sleep just fine without any of that extra stuff. So, <laughs> um, so hopefully this is helpful to you. At least uh, you know shows you how I do it, and I'm, hopefully the weather will be warming soon, and I won't have to be worrying about this anymore, anyways. But that's spring in Wyoming, and uh, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.